Today is Friday, the 19th of January. Welcome to our morning devotion. O Lord, open my lips. And my mouth will declare your praise. Make haste, O God, to deliver me. Make haste to help me, O Lord. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Praise to you, O Christ. Hallelujah. Blessed be God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. O come, let us worship him. O come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Let us come into his presence with thanksgiving. Let us make a joyful noise to him with songs of praise. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. The deep places of the earth are in his hand. The strength of the hills is his also. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hand formed the dry land. O oh, come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord, our maker. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. This morning we consider Matthew 8, verses 11 and 12. Jesus said, I tell you, many will come from east and west and recline at table with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven, while the sons of the kingdom will be thrown into the outer darkness. In that place there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. The example of the Gentile centurion at Capernaum offers a striking proof that honest disciples of Christ, including the humblest, purest, and most faithful souls who far surpass in shame the members of the Orthodox Church, are often found among the heterodox. Does this suggest that we should regard truth and error as of equivalent value, or that it does not matter? which church one attends? Since there are children of God among the heterodox, should we stop contending for purity of doctrine and against false teaching? Should Christians call all parties brothers and should we merge all churches? Heaven forbid. Many in the midst of heterodoxy come to true faith in Christ in their heart and are therefore saved. However, it does not follow that one can attain true faith and salvation through error. And many do indeed err out of simplicity and ignorance. But if they can recognize the truth, faithfully accept and appropriate it, and remain in it by God's grace, the errors that still hold them captive do not work toward their death. Whoever has been saved in simplicity, but then does not seek the truth, willfully remaining in error and a false religion, or even forsaking the true religion to side with the heterodox, moves from grace to malice and is rejected by God as an unfaithful servant. The correct interpretation of Christ's true disciples among the heterodox is found in today's text. Here, without doubt, Christ wants to sound a warning against security to all who belong to the communion of the Orthodox. In carnal security, the Jews relied upon the fact that they were children of Abraham, to whom God had given great promises. They were God's chosen people, and they possessed the revealed word of God, pure and clear, as well as the temple and the true worship. When the prophets of God threatened them with punishment, they replied, here is the Lord's temple, he surely would not destroy the, this holy place. When Christ chastised the Jewish people, particularly the high priests, scribes, and Pharisees, proclaiming their temporal and eternal destruction, they ignored him. They were, after all, the Orthodox Church, and they therefore thought they were not in danger. But our Lord insisted that while God would call guests to his heavenly table from every region under heaven, 
these outward participants in the true church, these children of the kingdom, would be cast into outermost darkness. We who possess the pure gospel and the genuine sacraments certainly have a great advantage over those who, perhaps from their youth, were victimized by false preaching. But let us not think that our membership in the Orthodox Church and our adherence to the pure doctrine will be sufficient for us. To whom much is given, from him will much be demanded. The purer our doctrine, the more firmly we must cling to it, and the more carefully we must guard against the invasion of false doctrine. The richer the comfort we receive from the gospel, the more faithful we must be in the faith. The more numerous the spiritual blessings we receive from God, the more fervent must be our love and the works in which we demonstrate our gratitude. If we walk as children of the kingdom and not as children of this world, we are blessed. For then we will not be cast out. Instead, we will be taken into the kingdom of eternal glory. And so we pray. Increase my faith, dear Savior. For Satan seeks by night and day to rob me of this treasure and take my hope of bliss away. But Lord, with thee beside me, I shall be undismayed. And led by thy good spirit, I shall be unafraid. Abide with me, O Savior, a firmer faith bestow. Then I shall bid defiance to every evil foe. Amen. And we'll pray together the words of the Te Deum. We praise you, O God. We acknowledge you to be the Lord. All the earth now worships you, the Father everlasting. To you, all angels, cry aloud, the heavens and all the powers therein. To you, cherubim and seraphim, continually do cry, Holy, 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 Lord God of Sabaoth. Heaven and earth are full of the majesty of your glory. The glorious company of the apostles praise you. The goodly fellowship of the prophets praise you. The noble army of martyrs praise you. The Holy Church throughout all the world does acknowledge you. The Father of an infinite majesty, your adorable, true, and only Son. Also the Holy Ghost, the Comforter. You are the King of glory, O Christ. You are the everlasting Son of the Father. When you took upon yourself to deliver man, you humbled yourself to be born of a virgin. When you had overcome the sharpness of death, you opened the kingdom of heaven to all believers. You sit at the right hand of God in the glory of the Father. We believe that you will come to be our judge. We therefore pray you to help your servants, whom you have redeemed with your precious blood. Make them to be numbered with your saints in glory everlasting. O Lord, save your people and bless your heritage. Govern them and lift them up forever. Day by day we magnify you, and we worship your name forever and ever. Grant, O Lord, to keep us this day without sin. O Lord, have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us. O Lord, let your mercy be upon us as our trust is in you. O Lord, in you have I trusted. Let me never be confounded. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen.